Okay. Now, we're going to get into psychometry. And psychometry is about interpreting the information or vibration, energy, off of an object. Now, what is the most powerful energy we generate within us? covered this. Okay, that's an aspect of it. What else? Any strong emotion? Ah, bingo. Emotion. Any strong emotion is going to be imprinted on an object. You ever walk into a room and felt, oh my God, it's so, so closed in here, so close, so dismal. Well, that's Earth occupants energy imprinting itself on the walls and such. Um, when you get the sensation of, uh, boy, this person here feels kind of creepy, I just feel kind of easy. You know, again, that's a type of psychometry. Although it's a little different, the idea is still the same. So, now, there are different levels that we can read. We can read emotion, thought, we can hear, we can see images, we can sense a number of things. And we can even see the past or something if it, if it, if it belongs to the substance first. Okay, you got me confused. I think I know what you're saying. What Reverend Bartman was saying is that, well, for one, when you're doing psychometry, the only thing you're reading is two points in time. First point is anybody. First point should be easy. Present? Yes. And the second point. Now, what you can read off of an object is not only the owner of the object, but also previous owners, and including a history on the object itself. Now, the best way I explain this is everybody looks to be old enough to know what a cassette player is. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. I think I still have one here. <laughs> I was, when I was working, I made comment to this young fellow I was working with that I needed to get a turntable. Now, we all know what a turntable is, right? Yep. All right. And he looked at me and he said, Bill, what's a turntable? <laughs> then we know we're getting old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't feel old. <laughs> I never feel old unless I'm, I'm just not up with it. But anyway, I kind of chuckled and I explained it to him. So anyway, think of yourself as a cassette head. Now, music on a cassette is laid down in tracks. You have a track for drums, a track for, for mid-range, a track for high range, a track for voice. So. You are a cassette head. When you pick up an object, you are going to read the tracks on it. Now, the thing is that each of us, by nature, is going to pick up certain tracks better than others. It doesn't mean the other tracks are, are lost to us. It just means we have to work a little bit more to attune ourselves. Because... Energy is based on frequency, and if your frequency frequency is here, and the object or the track is or the object is here, its tracks are going to filter down, filter down or filter up. They're going yeah. to spread out. Yeah. And whatever track, now this is the law of attraction. Whatever track is going to work best with you is going to focus 
itself on you, or you're going to focus on it automatically. So when we're doing this, don't just think that you have to see something. Don't think that you have to, to do anything other than what comes naturally. Just relax and allow it to come to you. Now, let me see. Anything else? We'll talk about fillets when we get there. Okay. So, any comments? Any questions? Okay, now, I want you to take your hands and rub them together. No, I said rub them together, not pinch. <laughs> and then, I want you to bring them as far apart as you can. I know what you're doing. Yeah, you know. And then slowly bring them together until you feel a slight resistance. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, the reason why it's so far apart is because we meditated beforehand. Typically, you don't feel it until you get here. Yeah. So if you're feeling it that far apart, you're doing excellent, you're ready. All right, now. Yeah. Okay, who wants to go first? Let's make a difference. Everybody's going to do it. So, Karen, come up here and select an object. You cannot have either of the statues. Which? This? Okay. Judy, come select something. What were the words? Come select something. Um, oh, come and select something. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little walk. <laughs> uh, and while she's up, Denise, she might as well start heading out. Did you hear? She said uh, she, she needed said, the she exercise. Did, she did say that. Yes, she did. Far be it for me to take that opportunity away from her. Exactly. Exactly. I would never do that. No, no. All right. Now, some of the information you're going to receive is going to be private, or personal, or intimate, whatever you choose to call it. Now you can talk about what we do in the class, but we don't talk about what we learn about each other, okay? Because that is one of the drawbacks, in, in some ways, of teaching this. Is as you develop, you begin to learn things about other people. Some of those things you may not want to know. But, such is life. Okay, now, what I want you to do is just kind of hold it loosely. Hold it loosely in your hand, however. And you can close your eyes if you want. You can leave them open if you want. Doesn't make a difference. And just allow your mind to absorb. Now, you may receive images. You may receive emotions. Thoughts, ideas, sensations, you may hear stuff. Whatever you receive, just write it down and then go right back to the object. And we'll do that. I'll let you do that for a little bit.
take your time with this. Don't feel that you have to, to wait until you get everything stopped and then write it down. Because I'll tell you, sometimes you will be, what you receive will be like six or seven different commercials spliced together. It makes absolutely no sense. So take your time as you do this. If you don't get it all wrote down, don't worry about it. Whatever you are familiar with is what is going to stick out. Whatever may be unusual is what is going to stick out. Those are the things that you allow. You don't worry about the rest. Another thing is don't let the object fool you. I did this one time and I carried, I bought some crystal for this for what I needed. And I had one that I kept in my pocket. And when I pulled it out, I put it amongst the others. And they saw that I had it in my pocket. So someone picked it up, and they're reading off of it. And they begin to tell me that the owner of this worried, worries quite a bit. I don't know why they worry so much, because there's nothing to worry about. Now, person made a very grave mistake because he made an assumption. Because it was in my pocket, he assumed that I used it as a worry stone. And I had just purchased it the day before, so I didn't have it long enough to use for a worry stone. So, stone is blue. Exactly. Exactly. All right. I'll take a break. If you like, jot down what you've got. You can continue if you like while we while the others begin to share what they experience. I see Judy here shaking her head. Don't worry. Sometimes it takes time. So don't worry. If you don't receive anything, that's okay. We're not, this isn't a competition. Sometimes it takes us a while to develop it. And since you missed all of the first part of the class, okay, you're working with a disadvantage. So it will take you a little more time. Um, if you do some of the exercises that are in the resource materials in the first part, that will help you. Um, I know Beth likes to use a glass of water. So that will, if that works, that's fine. Uh, uh, you can use something similar to what we do with the statues here. That will help. The whole idea is to is to allow your mind to activate those areas of the brain. So it will take some time. And then don't focus on seeing. Just focus on the experience. Okay. So, all right. Ready, Reverend Barvin wants to go first. Yes, I, I do. I, I'm very confused. Okay. First, first, what did you have? I got I got passion, the word passion, and disappointment. And then that. Okay. I, I mean, peacefulness and disappointment. Then I got passion okay. and hurt. Then I find confusion. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you actually know the person who owned this ring. So you were right on. That's exactly how our marriage progressed. Okay. So because I, I, I wasn't sure who rings it was. I think yep. you said that. Yep. All um, right. What did you receive? Do you want to still hold that? No. Okay. Okay. This is very cool. This is what she was holding. Um. I looked at it and I noticed there was some writing on it. There was some little writing on it. Oh wow. Yeah, that's right. There is. I forgot. And I can't I don't know what language it is, but it's not English. It's 
that's not what it's not letters that I recognize. It looks like it might be Hebrew or I don't know. You know what I mean? It doesn't look like letters to me unless I can't see very well. It's yes, very it is Hebrew. Oh, that was a guess. <laughs> that was absolutely a guess. The person that owned that I felt like was young. Oh. Like teens or twenties. Okay. To wear that. And that their heritage was European. Okay. And that it was a male. Mm-hmm. And then because of the the ring around, I felt like worldly, like um, universal. And worldly with a two other world. Words that came to me. Okay. That was it. But I didn't see a face, I didn't see, you know, I don't know. Oh, that's okay. Okay. So, but I just liked it. This this was a gift from someone. Uh, a co-worker, actually, a supervisor. She eventually became a supervisor. But this was a gift that was given to me when I was ordained. So I received this, oh, 2005. The reason I know the year is because the year before that was when my brain was scrambled. So, um, but I wouldn't necessarily discount the idea of, of youth. Okay. Okay. Because that's a state of mind. Okay. Yep. Oh. Yep. Uh, oh, boy, was it? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, what else was there? Universal world. Um, universal world was because of the circle that. I felt like that, but and I said like the heritage was European. Okay. Um, something like like not Italian. Here. No, okay, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Italian. My okay. dad's side of the family is okay. Italian. Okay. Um, world and universe uh, within the tarot, which we'll get into after we wrap up this up. Uh, world or universe in some decks is a sign of completion. Um, it also represents expansiveness. Okay. So, very good. Oh, thank you. Very good. All right, who wants to start? I'll on? go next. Janice is pipe. raring to go. I had the pipe. When I held it, it felt light, you know. Mm-hmm. And also felt um, the broad in Reverend Miller, you know, how he smoked his pipe. I don't know if that's just because I knew that. Or... When I closed my line, my um, I I saw a long line of names of like people. That And then I felt the feeling of the pipe. You know, I could feel the pipe push the tobacco in there and push the finger inside it. I felt that. I also felt it, the emptying of the pipe, and also cleaning of the pipe. As I held it, it also came around. Pipe? Yeah, like a key, though. Oh, like a key? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then it went around. Yeah, yeah, okay. So this is a hexagon. Now, quiz everyone. What can you pick up from an object? Feelings. All right, now, we just covered this before we meditate. Emotions, emotions, feelings. History. History of owners. Owners and the object itself. The object itself. 
what you tied in on was the history of the object yeah. itself. Because I don't know, the only other person I, I know. I was always good in history class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only other person I know that smoked a pipe was Reverend Miller. But you saw a long line of pipes. And this manufacturer, uh, this is a juke pipe. Which man, and they manufactured pipes. A long line of pipes. The way it was shaped. Oh, and one developed. Thing I thought yeah. displayed like a special case or something. Well, this is yeah. my favorite pipe, so it's separate from the others. <laughs> they don't smoke it very often because it's cracked. But it's my favorite pipe, so very good. Excellent work. All right, Judy, what did you experience? Well, I first picked up the hat. I got that chill. That's okay. all I got. So, okay. And I couldn't go any further. Either. That's fine. Did you write that down? Yes. Very good. Because that's a start. Okay. That's a start. Very good. All right. Karen. You have the cap. Oh, you were at one time. Some of that sounds like my dad, but he didn't ride a bike. Uh, he did have a metal lunch pail, if I recall. He did have a mustache. And he did stop in for beer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he just moved in when that was what was. Well, I don't know. He, I don't know all of the places that he worked at. One of the places I do know that he worked at was uh, the Cook Nuclear Plant when it was being built. And I know we lived in Stevensville at the time, so it's you know it's it's close by. It's not close enough to ride per se, but it's close by, and that may have been. The indication was the bicycle, because you said riding it back and forth to work, and work was was relatively close by. It was just a jaunt away. So, very good, very good. I believe that leaves that. And what did you have? You picked up the lighter. lighter. I saw an image that looked like the silhouette of the Eiffel Tower. I saw a ship on the sea, like a big ship, like an ocean liner. I smelled camphor. I saw a black square on my left and a smaller black square on my square, not squirrel. On my center right, that merged into the first square on my left. And I received an image of a sharp, craggy mountain with snow on top. Figure that one. <laughs> okay, let's do this slow. Let me just do run one more time. Start with this distance. The silhouette of a tower, so it was black, so I okay. can shadow. I, so it's backlit. I only saw the black shadow side. Okay. It, looked, it was shaped like the Eiffel Tower. Shaped like the Eiffel Tower, which could also be the church steeple. Okay. Ship on the sea, a big ship, like an ocean liner. Okay. Or it could be a, I mean, it's not a yacht. It's not a yacht. A big it ship. It could be an ocean liner. Ocean liner. Okay. A... All right. I'm with you now. Okay. <clears throat> I smelled camphor. I don't know what that smells like. Where is it you? Oh, you know what? That stuff is cold. Cold, cold camphor and stuff. Yeah. It does have a very, it has a unique smell. And it, it, it is a little strong, but actually, it's a 
strong medicinal smell. Um, Use in any religious services. Oh, I bet. I wouldn't know. I would think so. I would have to Google that one. Okay. Okay, the black square here, like a shadow square, right. and then a little smaller one here that then merges into the one on the left. Okay. And then it got an image of a mountain, which would be similar in shape to the Eiffel Tower or church steeple because it just stood out on its own above everything else with snow on top and very pointy. All right. Okay. It sounds like you picked up um, passage, uh, let's see, years ago, decades ago actually, when I started getting into this stuff, started doing my experiments and everything, I saw a gentleman about my height, similar in build, maybe a little shorter, skin tone was a little more darker, and I uh, from like 30, 40s maybe, black pants, pressed, white shirt, sleeves rolled up just a little bit. Uh, and I had seen him several times. Uh, a few years, well, decades after that, yeah, I uh, was contacted by a cousin who lived in southern Illinois. She lives in California now. She gave me some pictures of the family. One of the pictures happened to be her grandfather, which was also the same person I saw when I was developing my own clairvoyant. So you may have picked up on that because he, along with my grandfather and I think one or two other brothers, came across the ocean on a liner. The statue you saw backlit it may have actually have been uh, Ellis Island, Statue of Liberty. Um, I'm not sure about the squares because they moved, they, they eventually they broke up. One, I mean, they were all went to Chicago and then they moved, and then from there they split. One went to Louisiana, one went to Stevensville, which was my grandfather, and he went to Colorado, Craggy Mountain. Very well have picked up on that. Well, that would be. Pardon? I was going to say, what her little black squares here? That little one went into the bigger one. Maybe it was uh, that that they uh, that they, they, maybe they all kept in touch. I don't know, but but there's something that that they were like it was split from there, but it came back. I don't know about split from there, but it well, almost sounds like uh, well, we did have dealings with Al Capone. Hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm good at picking that one up. So, <laughs> where'd the camper fall in? Was well, physically or well, it's with medicine. So yeah, yeah it, you're right. Well, the only reason I ask religion is because they would be Catholic. The incense. Exactly. This no, this was medicinal. Yeah, my sense. Medicinal camper. Sometimes it's even used. Or it might remember the old, old air wicks. Yeah. The old, old air wicks. That had a sense of camera. Yeah. And those were used in, you know, in like storage spaces or. Well, camper, I wouldn't, I'm, 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 I can't put it. I'm not familiar with the smell to actually be able to place it. It isn't there uh, like a camper netball that you can use? Uh, that's a sad like stuff. Yeah, it's right. a camper that you right. can use like Vicks paper on the water. Vicks? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. something like that, but it's not exactly Vicks. 
but you can use it as same cause uh, for uh, your chest and stuff. To open. Difficulty breathing? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, in that instance, uh, that could easily be applied to my grandfather. Because he moved into a separate room so he could keep his window open for the air. And, uh, and, and I know he died of a heart attack, but I don't know if he had other ailments. But I can place it with that very easily. So he could have picked up on all three of the was it three brothers. I think so. Could have picked up on no, there was four. But I forgot about Sam. Sam, I remember because he was around. <laughs> <laughs> so excellent work. Excellent, everyone. You're doing very good. Oh, and in fact, this went much faster than I had anticipated. All right. Any questions? Not for myself, probably. Oh, I, I don't know why. I, I don't know why, but it's not. Well, I'll tell you, I was going to ask you this. If you had noticed that when we hold these classes, if afterwards you don't feel... Uh, thirsty or, or more hungry than normal because if you do it's that's a normal part of, of the class see and i also feel that way in church after meditation and giving and giving messages and stuff but by that time i'm starting to feel more hungry than what i should be oh yeah especially with messages because when you do this stuff when you do this work because i okay. ate a little something before i came so so did we Karen and I, we ate a little bit before, and that's why I can't figure out why my stomach's growing. That's why I keep growing. Well, that's why, you know. Yeah. That energy, the energy you're using has to come from somewhere. So that's why, you know, if you feel tired after the class, because especially now, because you're starting to do stuff, tired, um, you find yourself drinking more water than, than usual or you just can't figure out why you're so hungry this is why because you are doing that energy has to come from somewhere so you look a little perplexed karen oh oh <laughs> why do you have more to add to it numbers, numbers. numbers. what numbers you didn't numbers. i don't remember that the numbers. The numbers. Which numbers? Oh. Did he play numbers? Well, I don't play a lot or No, it was it. Is that your dad's hat? No. Okay. This is all my stuff. <laughs> what, the hat? Yeah, was it handed down? No, no, no. I bought this in Southern Illinois at Kmart. All right. <laughs> bought that at Woolworth, bought that at Wilson's. You should have bought a lottery ticket. The only thing I had that was his, the only thing I had that was his that was handed down was this ring. But that wouldn't stop you from picking up on him. Wouldn't? No, it wouldn't, because he's part of my history. Now, I don't recall if he played the lottery, which is the number. Yeah, mm -hmm. playing numbers. It's just legalized, that's all. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's on that played card game games or solitaire? Or now, like I that? do remember that on uh, New Year's, mm -hmm. New Year's uh, we would go over to my mother's parents and they would play called Michigan Rummy or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. all bring mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that could yeah. be could be tying in on that. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that comes to mind with numbers is lottery tickets. I don't know if he played the lottery. He may have. I can see him I can see him doing it. I mean myself, is, you know, I'd rather play the stock market than buy lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you're at it. Yeah, you're more likely to get anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Horses. Mm -hmm. 
chills when you get that you're you're picking up on something yeah. you're making a connection yeah. Yeah. but um yeah capone used to have uh houses all up through here i think he had uh, a couple of big mansions yeah. but met in harvard yeah. Yeah. and maybe in st joe or uh, you know i don't know if he had any down here around here or not And, and with you picking up the chills, you know, that's, that's a good sign there. That's a good sign. It means that you're, 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 you're beginning to prime the pump, so to speak. So, very good. 